Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Today, we'll be rounding out Patron Week with an archetype chosen by the holder of the Quasar Commander tier. Last month, they sent me to the task of covering Chronomaly, but that was only one of the Arclight siblings. So today, we'll be covering the next. Gimmick Puppets premiered in the... Well... It's weird. The first two releases were as promo cards for Shonen Jump subscriptions, before getting a proper introduction in the 2013 side set Number Hunters, a pack chock full of Zexel goodies. And speaking of which, their pilot is Quattro Arclight, the pro duelist with a little bit of a sadistic streak. But it's okay, he's just trying to save his dear old dad. Aww. We've got a lot of hardware to talk about today, so let's manipulate our marionettes to get a good look at them, find out what their gimmicks actually are, then see if we can add a few more limbs to this disembodied embodiment of body horror. It's time to pull some strings with gimmick puppets. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and the first stop on our trip is 20k, which means we're incredibly close to unlocking You Say Explained, where we'll be covering Junks, Stardust, and whatever other cards can help us rev it up! We've also got our Discord, where the votes are in. Delilah is, in fact, based. You can also follow me on Twitch, where you can join me for viewer duels and progression polls polls, and don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which explained videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with gimmick puppets? Well, they're dark, with the occasional Earth, attribute machine type monsters. They have a few utility effects sprinkled in, but they're largely defined by being good material for high rank XC summons and blowing up a bunch of cards as payoff. Really quick, let's get the Earth gimmick puppets out of the way. Gimmick Puppet Gear Changer is a level 1 monster with 100 attack and defense, and cannot be special summoned from the deck. Once per turn, you can target a Gimmick Puppet monster you control, except this card, and Gear Changer's level becomes the level of that monster. So you can't deploy it out of the deck, but can be revived from the grave as needed. So that's pretty neat. It'll essentially be any level that's needed to make an Xyz monster befitting another monster you already control. But to really appreciate its design, you have to go all the way back to the origin of this monster's Gearbox design, way back to the medieval times. In fact, go Google Gearbox Medieval Times to learn more. You won't regret it. Gimmick Puppet Egghead is a level 4 monster with 1600 attack and 1200 defense, and they can discard a Gimmick Puppet to activate one of two effects. Either burn your opponent for 800 damage, or change Egghead's level to 8 until the end phase. Rank 8s are this deck's bread and butter, and we normally play a lot of cards that thrive in the grave. So this card acts as a very interesting enabler, though can be a bit annoying if you don't have a monster to pitch. Or, if you want to use them as part of a rank 4, but still want the discard, then hey, there are worse effects to copy than Ukazi. Not many, but they exist. Regardless, it's pretty smart to give it a secondary effect to keep its level flexible, but if anyone can pull it off, it's this monster. They are a bit of an egghead. Okay, now let's get back to talking about the only attribute that really matters, Dark. Gimmick Puppet Destroy... <laughs> I see what you did there. Is a level 4 monster with 1200 attack and 2000 defense. Once while face up on the field, you can target a gimmick puppet monster on the field and destroy it. And when this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can special summon one or two gimmick puppets from your hand. Remember, this is a when effect, so it can miss timing. Meaning that one of the best targets for destroy is... Well itself, especially since none of our other puppets benefit from being destroyed. But enough about that effect, Here's this nice horse, now let it into your house. It definitely isn't full of a bunch of smaller dolls that'll attack you in the middle of the night small soldier style. I promise. Gimmick Puppet Humpty Dumpty is a level 4 monster with 0 attack and 100 defense. And when normal or special summoned, you can special summon a Gimmick Puppet monster from your hand. And... Dub... That's it. They summon more material to help you with Xyz summoning, just make sure you have one in hand to actually summon. Oh, and that is level 4. And if it's not, it has to have a way to modulate levels. Because if you mess up the play sequence with them, you're gonna have a hard time putting them back together again. Gimmick Puppet Scissor Arms is a level 4 monster with 1200 attack and 600 defense, and when normal summoned, you can send a Gimmick Puppet monster from your deck to the grave. Not bad for an on-theme Armageddon Knight, but since it only works on normal summon, it's nowhere near as powerful. 
As stated previously, one of our best gimmick puppets thrive in the grave, and needs a steady stream of monsters to fuel their effect. Egghead might be good for getting those cards tossed in from the hand, but Scissors goes right for the deck because they prefer to cut to the chase. Gimmick Puppet Terror Baby is a level 4 monster with 500 attack and 0 defense, and when normal summoned, you can target a Gimmick Puppet monster in your grave, except another copy of itself, and special summon that monster in defense position. You can also banish Terror Baby from your grave to make it so your opponent can't activate cards or effects in response to the activation of your Gimmick Puppet monster effects that turn. Which is great, because let me tell you, this deck has a lot of gimmicks, but protection isn't one of them, so it can revive one of your level 4s to make a rank 4, or get one of your bigger Xyz monsters to help with some Chaos Xyz summoning. It's really powerful, but it's so creepy, and I want to dock points for it, but like, that's what it wants. If I talk about how unsettling it is that the carriage has teeth on it, I'm giving it what it wants. But god, I hate those teeth. Gimmick Puppet Shadow Feeler is a level 8 monster with 1000 attack and defense that can't be destroyed by battle. When you take battle damage from an opponent's direct attack while this card is in your grave, you can special summon this card from your grave in face up attack position, and if you do, take 1000 damage. And if this card is an Xyz material and would be sent to the grave, it's banished instead, which is... The opposite of what usually happens. Being Xyz material normally helps you to avoid being banished. Shadow Feeler can help put some level 8 material on board while obstructing more attacks from your opponent, but only marginally. Having to take direct attacks and then taking a thousand more effect damage and leaving it in an attack position with those stats is like throwing a speed bump in front of a Formula 1 race car. It might rattle the suspension, but won't do much to stop things. And if that wasn't enough of a deterrent to play it, it's got some unfortunate levels of human centipede energy. So we're just gonna move on to the next card. Gimmick Puppet Twilight Joker is a level 8 monster with 800 attack and 1600 defense. And when a Gimmick Puppet monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you can banish that Gimmick Puppet to special summon Twilight Joker from your hand. Joker here is very similar to Dark Feeler, insofar as you get a level 8 monster on board in response to battle. But with Joker, you have a bit more control, as you can crash your gimmick puppets into your opponent's monster on your turn, rather than having to wait for a direct attack. But it's still far from ideal, especially since nothing in the theme's kit synergizes with being banished, or taking damage. Like, if Joker had stats that made them anything more than an Xyz material, it might be a cool combat trick. But as it stands, it's kind of a joke. Gimmick Puppet Nightmare is a level 8 monster with 1000 attack and 2000 defense, and you can special summon it from your hand by tributing a face-up Xyz monster you control. And when you do, you can special summon a Gimmick Puppet Nightmare from your hand or grave. And if special summoned at all, you can't special summon any monsters for the rest of the turn except Gimmick Puppets. Oh man, this card was so close to being good! In theory, Nightmare is a way to use spent Xyz monsters to make fresh ones, and it can do that! But since it can only special summon other copies of itself, it requires a very specific setup. Which is an odd juxtaposition with the card's art, because since it lacks any legs, it's otherwise very... handy. Gimmick Puppet Magnet Doll is a level 8 monster with 1000 attack and defense, and if your opponent controls a monster and all monsters you control are face-up Gimmick Puppet monsters, minimum 1, you can special summon Magnet Doll from your hand. Finally, an on-theme monster that just gets summoned onto the board with minimal restrictions, thank goodness. And it had the grace to not be once per turn, so as long as you have a gimmick puppet and your opponent has established even a little bit of a board presence, you can spit them out of your hand. You know, cause they're drawn to each other. Gimmick Puppet Dreary Doll is a level 8 monster with 0 attack and defense, and if this card is in your grave, you can banish another Gimmick Puppet monster to special summon this card. Also, Dreary Doll can't be used as material for an Xyz summon, except for a Gimmick Puppet one. Since Doll doesn't get banished like some other monsters I could mention, you can summon a level 8 monster every turn to help with your Gimmick Puppet rank 8s, or any generic Link monster, provided you can coffin up the cost for it. Gimmick Puppet Bisque Doll is a level 8 monster with 1000 attack and defense, and you can special summon them from your hand by discarding a Gimmick Puppet monster. You can also banish Bisque Doll from your grave to prevent your opponent from targeting Gimmick Puppet monsters you control with card effects this turn. Can you tell that Bisque and Terror Baby are both modern legacy support? Anyway, not much to add here, Bisque is another monster you can throw on board to help reach your boss monsters, and can provide targeting protection, which works great alongside Terror Baby's ability to make your Gimmick Puppet effects unrespondable. Now, after doing some research, I'm aware that Bisque is a kind of porcelain material used in doll making, but all it's making me think of is Lobster Bisque.
Alright, that's all our main deck monsters, now it's time to cover our extra deck monsters. And the first one is actually our newest, as well as the theme's first, rank 4. Gimmick Puppet Gigantes Doll has 0 attack and 2000 defense, requiring 2 level 4 Gimmick Puppet monsters as material. You can detach 2 material from this card, then target up to 2 monsters your opponent controls, and gain control of them until the end phase. Also, you can't special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except Gimmick Puppets, and you can't declare an attack, except with Xyz monsters. You can also tribute Gigante's Doll to change the level of all monsters you currently control to 8 until the end of the turn. So it's kinda like the new Vampire Xyz monsters. It takes your opponent's monsters and molds them into whatever shape is needed for your Xyz, which are all thankfully generic enough that anything with the level can be used. After modulating, of course. It's also a nifty little easter egg hunt, as it's made of the body parts of a bunch of gimmick puppets we've covered so far. But I mean, that would involve having to stare at this horrendous thing for any amount of time, so even if you complete this little game of I Spy, who's really the winner? Okay, now it's time for the rank 8s. Notably, each one also has a Chaos Xyz form, which can be reached via any kind of generic rank up effect, or by hard summoning it, but like, why? And we'll be going over that form right after the base form. Point of order though, I've covered a few monsters like this in the past, and I've been told that this format of naming is supposed to be pronounced Chaos Number 39, not Number C39. However, if they wanted me to say it like that, they should have formatted it that way. Got it? Good. Number 15, Gimmick Puppet Giant Grinder is a rank 8 monster with 1500 attack and 2500 defense, and requires 2 level 8 monsters as material. Up to twice per turn, during your main phase 1, you can detach an Xyz material from this card, then target a special summoned monster your opponent controls and destroy it. Then, if it was an Xyz monster, you inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. So it's an anti-Xyz... Ixie's monster, but can be used to clean up any special summoned monster if need be, so thankfully it's not so specialized as to be useless in many scenarios. And since you can use the effect twice per turn, you can get a lot of cleaning done. But you know, good luck transporting that thing anywhere, that rig looks like it's a pain to transport. Does that little guy do that all by themselves? Number C15, Gimmick Puppet Giant Hunter is a rank 9 monster with 2500 attack and 1500 defense, requiring 3 level 9 monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach an Xyz material from this card, then target a card your opponent controls, destroy it, and if it was a monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original attack. Good grief, this card is a slaughterhouse in a can, isn't it? Like, you pop two special summoned monsters with Grinder, rank up into Giant Hunter, and pop another card with some burn damage thrown in if you end up blasting the appropriate targets. Something weird though, Giant Hunter is... I believe the first Chaos Xyz monster I've seen that doesn't have an additional effect by having the base monster as material. So while this doesn't mean I'd recommend hard making this card, if you have a rank up play sequence that could somehow make this, it's not like you're going to be missing out. And another big plus, it looks like they finally equipped that rig for mobility. Ain't that nice? Number 40, Gimmick Puppet of Strings is a rank 8 monster with 3000 attack and 2000 defense, requiring 2 level 8 monsters as material. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to place a string counter on each face-up monster on the field, except this card. And once per turn, during the next end phase of the opponent of the player who placed the string counters by this effect, destroy the monsters with string counters, and if you do, inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent for each monster destroyed. This is... God, I hate to be disparaging, but this is one of the worst board wipes ever conceived. Uh, thankfully, it's stapled onto a 3000 attack body, but not only does it have a long delay, the monsters with string counters on it need to stay on the field, and Gimmick Puppet of Strings also has to survive. Because the board wipe isn't a lingering effect, it triggers the turn after the string placing effect was used. So your opponent will either destroy strings, or use everything with a string counter on it as material for a summon to get some kind of value out of them. I'm certainly not a fan of it, especially since they missed the opportunity to reference one of the best side characters in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Number C40, Gimmick Puppet of Dark Strings, is a rank 9 monster with 3300 attack and 2000 defense, requiring 3 level 9 monsters as material. And when special summoned, you destroy all monsters with string counters, and if you do, draw a card, then inflict damage to your opponent equal to the highest original attack among those destroyed monsters in the grave, your choice of tide. 
and once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to place a strength counter on each face-up monster your opponent controls. Okay, this is a much-needed follow-up to the base form. As long as you have a rank-up effect to turn strings into dark strings, you get a quicker board wipe that draws you a card and deals damage, which makes it a significantly better board wipe. It also doesn't have an effect that requires base strings as material, but since you need string counters on the board to make this effective, I'm gonna count it. Placing string counters after the trigger is kinda weird, but it does mean dark strings can place the counters, get destroyed, then be revived to do it all over again. Because it triggers on special summon, not exceed summon. Nor is it once per turn, for what it's worth. And while the when at the beginning of it is a little scary, it is mandatory, so it won't miss timing. So feel free to string together your effects however you want. Number 88, Gimmick Puppet of Leo, is a rank 8 monster with 3200 attack and 2300 defense, requiring 3 level 8 monsters as material. Once per turn, if you have no cards in your spell and trap card zone, you can detach a material from this card, and if you do, place a destiny counter on this card. And you cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this effect. When 3 destiny counters are on this card, you win the duel. Yup. On top of everything else in this theme, there's also an instant win condition. Unfortunately, because of the nature of the effect, you can't use any continuous spells and traps to provide protection, and whatever other spells and traps you use better be able to do their job and go away, because the last thing you want to be doing is delaying the 3 turn clock any longer than you have to. Though notably, it doesn't preclude you from having a card in your field spell zone. Gosh, if, if only there was a field spell that was famous for its ability to stall the game out for long periods of time. Like, it's, it's such a weird, specific request, I know, but like, can you imagine if someone printed something like that that, that, that that turned the game into this huge quagmire of, of nothingness going on? If, if something that mystical existed? I wish it was mine. Number C88, Gimmick Puppet Disaster Leo, is a rank 9 monster with 3500 attack and 2500 defense. That lists its material as 4 level 9 monsters, but also states it must be special summoned with a rank up magic spell card targeting Gimmick Puppet of Leo, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Disaster Leo can be targeted by card effects, and once per turn, you can detach material from this card to inflict 1000 points of damage to your opponent. And during your end phase, if your opponent's life points are 2,000 or less, and this card has no Xyz material, you win the duel. Wow, another win condition. And one that can technically be done faster than the base form. You'll just need to find a non-targeting way to remove the Xyz material, because that targeting protection is reciprocal. Thankfully, Disaster Leo is a number monster, and this form does not have the numerous restrictions the base form has, so you can benefit from all the number and Xyz support you could ever want, some of which will actually help you detach those material faster. The life point threshold does make it kind of a cop-out, essentially winning when your opponent loses 6,000 life points instead of 8,000, but this does mean this card is basically an auto-win against Dinorphia, even if they summon Rexstrom, because not only does this victory condition not activate, victory conditions aren't effects at all. They're their own silly little thing. So even if Disaster Leo's effects are negated by something like Skill Drain, you can still win. How wild is that? Uh, try taking this to a tournament and seeing how much of a disaster you can be. That's our last Xyz monster, but not our last extra deck monster. Because despite all the limitations you can place on yourself using these effects, they've also got a Link monster. Gimmick Puppet Chimera Doll is a Link 2 monster with 1500 attack, requiring two machine monsters as material. During your main phase, if you control this Link Summon card, you can activate this effect. You can't special summon monsters from your extra deck for the rest of the turn, except machine Xyz monsters. Also take a Gimmick Puppet monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or send it to the grave. Then if all monsters you control are Gimmick Puppets, minimum one, you can special summon a Gimmick Puppet monster from your hand. Dang. Death Troy really went to town on the literal bodybuilding. Anyway, this makes for a great enabler for the theme. Essentially summoning a Gimmick Puppet from your deck, but wording it in such a way that you can get Gear Changer. Remember Gear Changer? But if you already have one in hand that you want to summon, you can just send Dreary Doll to the grave, or food for them, then summon whatever you have in hand. And since the material is only two machines, Deskbot 3 can summon Deskbot 1 to make it. I do not know how I feel about being associated with this. Yeah, me neither. But you've got to admire how they used a limbless torso to look like a horse head? Right? Right? Uh, okay, change of subject. The Gimmick Puppet Spells and Traps. First is Puppet Ritual, a normal spell that you can only activate if your opponent's life points are at least 2,000 higher than yours. So at least Dark Feeler served some kind of purpose, even if 
you know, losing life points is something your opponent's gonna help you with anyway. You can target two level 8 gimmick puppet monsters in your grave and special summon them, but you cannot conduct your battle phase that turn. Which isn't a huge deal with all the potential burn damage we'll be doing anyway. I also like that it doesn't put you into any other restrictions at that time, so those level 8s can be used for anything. Link 2, off theme rank 8, you might even be able to use them to set up protection for your other plays. How wild is that? But, designers, you literally have a mechanic called Ritual. You can't slap that onto things willy-nilly. You can't even use Xyz monsters for Ritual summons. Don't look at me like that, Drytrons! Junk Puppet is a normal spell that targets a gimmick puppet monster in your grave and special summons it. So... Monster Reborn for Gimmick Puppets. Got it. Not really a lot to talk about here. It's obviously really good in a deck that needs Xyz material, though since it doesn't specify a level, it can summon back one of our big Xyz monsters so you can rank them up. It'll also be really funny if a Junk Spell Searcher ever gets released. I'd love to see how you say the Milkman Fudo crosses over with Quattro the Ball Joint Doll Yandere. Condolence Puppet is a normal spell that sends gimmick puppet monsters with different names from your deck to the grave, up to the number of monsters your opponent controls that were special summoned from the extra deck, plus one. So even if they don't have any, it's still a foolish burial with some upsides. You can also banish Condolence from your grave, then target a machine exceeds monster you control, and it can't be destroyed by your opponent's card effects while face up on the field. No, until the end of the turn line here, so it's quick acting and long lasting. It's not only helpful in general, but is a second win to the first Leo Xyz, granting it some protection. It can't help Disaster Leo because they can't be targeted, though they can both benefit from Bisque and Terror Baby while they're in the bin, something they gravely need. Perform Puppet is a continuous spell that lets you banish a gimmick puppet from your grave to make all monsters you control that banished monsters level until the end of this turn, even if Perform leaves the field. And if any number of face-up gimmick puppet monsters you control are destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the grave, you can target one of your banished gimmick puppet monsters and special summon it. Destroy, it's your time to shine! Good gravy is this card useful, it lines your levels up so sending random level 8s to the grave can have some purpose, and can get you back the monsters you banished for dreary dolls, or heck, perform puppets, effect. And I hate how Humpty looks in this art, I'm sorry, but I feel like I'm about to be dropped headfirst into an ARG that's heavily influenced by Toy Story, I don't like it. Our last card is Puppet Parade, a normal trap that you can activate if your opponent controls more monsters than you do. You special summon gimmick puppet monsters with different names from your deck up to the difference, then if your opponent has at least 2,000 more life points than you do, you can set a rank up magic normal spell directly from your deck. But for the rest of the turn, you're locked into only being able to special summon gimmick puppet monsters, but really, that's nothing new, though it certainly doesn't make it bad. Being a trap means you can activate this during your opponent's end phase, reap all the benefits, then use the puppets for whatever kind of summon you want. As for the rank up magic, you've got a fair bit to choose from. Argent Chaos Force is the most flavorful choice, and returns to your hand after you make a big gimmick puppet after you use it. But you could also get Barian's Force to steal an Xyz material. However, the most useful one, hands down, is Numeron Force, because of its mass effect negation. Not just monster effects, every other face up card besides your Xyz monster. Like, imagine going into strings, placing the counters, making dark strings with Numeron Force, negating their entire field, stripping away any destruction protection they might have, then wiping out all their monsters. It's a ridiculous combo, but don't expect them to show up at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade again after... the incident. Okay, so that's all the gimmick puppets, but what do we do with them? Well, uh, um... That's actually kind of a toughie. Giant Grinder and Strings Burn Effect make it feel like we should be focusing on winning through Stall Burn, but that's incredibly reliant on our opponent's choices to put monsters on the field. And since our removal isn't at quick effect speed, we can't be content to lean back and wait for the Ws to roll in, because our opponent will do their darndest to pry open our board. Winning through Disaster Leo is funny, but is such a crippling build around. And while we may be able to take the occasional win by using our level 8s to make Draglubian and go for the Numeron Dragon OTK, we have so many special summon locks that we can't effectively lean into the rank 8 toolbox to supplement general beatdown. This deck is... kind of a mess in terms of what we want to do, but what can we play to help them out? Well, first off, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Marshalling Field. Not a gimmick puppet card, but pretty close to it, especially with all the arc-like crests in the art. 
Not only can it help give you access to the other Arclight siblings' ace number monsters, you can also go into monsters like Phantom Fortress Enter Blathnir for some banishing, the Infinitrax, especially Earth Slicer for some nifty removal, or Cyber Dragon Nova to eventually gain access to Infinity. That is, of course, if you haven't already locked yourself into only summoning gimmick puppets. The Destruction Protection is pretty neat too, as well as the ability to retrieve Argent Chaos Force, so all around, a pretty neat way to add some flexibility to your summons. Just, you know, as long as they're machines. Since we're talking about Dark Machines, we've got to cover the synergies with the Bandit Keith support. BM4 Blast Spider is a Scrap Dragon that can deal burn damage as well, so you have a way to leverage spare gimmick puppets into removal. Desperado Barrel Dragon can come to the rescue if your Dark Machines are destroyed, not to mention act as powerful, though luck-dependent, removal. And since we don't have a field spell, Heavy Metal Raiders has a spot all its own, providing battle destruction protection and a way to summon more monsters from your hand. For machine assistance, Gear Spring Spirit is a free level 8 monster you can special summon that also has attack reduction. Machine Duplication works very well with Dreary Doll to get them all out of your deck, but we don't have very many other good targets. We can't even get Gear Changer because of its own restriction. But thanks to Magnet Warriors, we have Magnet Force to keep our monsters safe from monster effects, and Magnet Reverse to summon back our Xyz monsters. Outrigger Extension will only be able to use its targeting protection effect, but that's still targeting protection. And of course, right out of Dimension Force, the one, the only, Therian's King Regulus, giving you access to an Omni Negate that's also, hilariously, level 8. As for a silly tech pick, well, the deck's already covered on removal, but what if we had more removal? What if we had all the removal? That's where EMR comes in. See, the strings are pretty good at blowing up monsters, but not back row. So once Dark Strings tanks an entire board, you can tribute it to EMR to take out three spells and traps. And because of the nature of tributing for cost, you can also use it on any gimmick puppet with a thousand or more original attack to get them out of the way of targeted effect negation like Valor and Imperm. And that's all I've got to say about gimmick puppets. They're in odd bunch that revel in the act of picking apart your opponent's monsters limb by limb, and watching that opponent squirm as their life points steadily drop to zero. They've got a bit of a focus issue, but with the right encouragement in practice, it can break boards with the best of them. It's also highly appealing if you ever wanted to be Sid, so go nuts. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do you think that gimmick puppets are the guardians of the avant-garde, or are their joints still a bit too stiff? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video to show your support, subscribe so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. This video was sponsored by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commander, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh!, Nebula Navigators, Adam Zagedel, Benjamin Meisner, Eric, Gloomba331, Howling Zangetsu, John Manji, Panther J, Shooting Star3300, Sun Sorrow, The Wizard Moose and the Fresh Prince of Conair, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Colin Todd, Manga Pages, RGS and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. And if you want to hear me talk about another deck piloted by one of the Arclight siblings, check out this deck I made covering Chronomaly. And if you want to see two Yu-Gi-Tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series, Progression Polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye